channel. This is again I'm a singer, a channel voice. Hello guys, I'm wearing red. Let it red. She's dancing with me. Welcome back to business. Hello, mga kapatid. Simultaneous live streaming in my FB channel and in my YT channel. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is about again my favorite vocabulary time. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to be introducing to you 10 terminologies with respect to profound terminologies, particularly being explained and emphasized well in journalism. Okay, so we are not taking this uh, seriously because these are only optional to be used in articles, you know, conceptualization or any report conceptualization. <laughs> conceptualization or creation well okay so we have 10 terminologies here so last week i think so we introduced also about 15 right now <laughs> okay so we have number one we have assimilate assimilate inevitable abhorrent repugnant like that repugnant so then the, the stress will be in the second here, okay? Repugnant, something like that. Delinquent, chastity, chastity, like that, okay? Opulent, reiterated, reiterated, okay? Uh, labyrinth, take note the sound, labyrinth, pH sound, labyrinth. Mm. And then affluent, affluent. Affluent. Okay. Let's go now to the definition, right? Each definition of these words, right? Or terminologies. Assimilate. We have at least maximum of nine synonyms for this. Okay. The first, mga palanda, hi, shout out to my uh, subscribers, to my simultaneous FB friends and also YT subscribers. Hello, how are you? Okay, it's nice to be back <laughs> in the online world of loving, okay, and live stream. Okay, we have here, assimilate. So take note the importance of enunciating the I and the E, okay, the soft E, okay, and the hard I, E, like that, okay, so assimilate, okay, the spelling will be, no need to mention the spelling, right? Okay, you, you, you can take a look only. Assimilate meaning you need to understand. Okay, this is another term, right? Understand then you're going to be comprehending or comprehend. Okay, like that, comprehend. To, to master, something like, okay? We use master not as a noun, but we use master as a verb this time this particular definition okay we have master to master this word is to memorize and to understand very well okay to master okay because there are also words that can be used uh simultaneously and can be used at the same time as a noun and a verb it depends on the usage and application of a sentence we knew the connection of the subject and the predicate, right? <laughs> Something like that. Okay. Now we go now to the digest. Digest also can be used as a verb, okay? And sometimes also noun. Something like that depends on the sentence, okay? So digest, okay, like that. Absorb, okay? You get the point, okay? Pick up, okay? Like that, okay? Learn. Okay, like that. Absorb. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, seven of the definition of assimilate. Okay, meaning you have to absorb. Jun Jun absorbed the lesson very well after his instructor has been delivering the content of the lesson on the particular day. Absorb. Okay, or pick up, okay? That's what we said. Oh, this guy have a slow pick up for the particular uh, topic or for the particular lesson like that, okay? Because 
and he cannot understand quickly something like so let's pick up also okay so there are two types of pick up the pick up through getting the the materials from the floor from the table let's also pick up or if you also arrange for a transportation and you can arrange to the taxi driver something like they have to call him please pick up me in the gate something like that and i'm waiting to to you something like that so that's also pick up okay then this is also another term for pick up meaning understanding okay to understand okay comprehend okay that's why you always check if we comprehend the lesson like after this i will discuss all the definitions of this of this 10 10 terminologies i will say did you comprehend what i am discussing what has been discussed previously uh, comprehend did you understand did you digest did you absorb did you learn okay the common is learn and understand right and then master is also related but master is more on the you know expert expertise already okay but still the same story but more on a higher level okay, meaning after the discussion of the instructor something like that in a classroom and then we will say you you already master what's the lesson all about so it's, it's gonna be like higher level okay comparing to learn but it goes in the same manner okay in definition okay so that's assimilate. So use assimilate in the sentence. Okay. <laughs> For example, Jun Jun assimilate well the lessons. Okay, the chemistry lesson. Meaning I understand very well the lesson of chemistry. Something like assimilate verb. Okay. Assimilate. Okay. Not A double S I M I L A T E. Okay. Different. So you can use the assimilation as a process. Then you can use also that as a, a verb, action verb as assimilating, right? Adding ing form. Okay. Then past participle will be assimilated. Just put d happening in the past. Something like that. Then we're done. Okay. Number two, inevitable. Yeah, say inevitable speaking. This is very, very important in order for us to to be safe. Right? <laughs> inevitable speaking. Yes. Okay. So before anything else, what is inevitable? Okay. Usually, you know, in a higher discussion, for example, if you are taking out your PhD or masters after your bachelor's degree, and you have to pursue further studies in your specialization or in your uh, course something like that then you have to undergo this kind of work that you will use always uh, inevitably we need to do this in order for us to learn because if we don't learn this we cannot go to the higher subject something like that okay what is inevitable i n e v e t a b l e inevitable meaning this is mandatory. Mandatory. Okay. Please listen carefully, huh? As I as I open my mouth, listen very well. Okay. Something like that. As I can shake and pronunciate the words, you can also take down notes. Okay. Never mind with the intonation, enunciation. Just focus on the definition. Okay. Because you know. It's not all the time always, especially if we are using different type of English language, for example, as your uh, reference or pattern. For example, if you're using British English and you're also using Italian English or whatever, or using American English, so we could not expect we have the same clarity of pronunciation. It depends on the ethnicity. Ethnicity meaning racial regions to regions all over the world could it be in asia in africa in america in europe so our intonation and enunciation and pronunciation will vary it's not the same something like that but we as filipinas we are focused on because we're using american english since we are in elementary level at a very young age we already have a subject even though we are four years old five years old so we know how to speak english already 
So that's why we are very particular in the fluency in our effective communication by using an international language as English all the time as much as we could apart from our national language which is the Filipino or Tagalog something like that okay you get, you get the point okay something like that okay number three oh, three <laughs> we have abhorrent well, and then you need to emphasize the T sound at the end oh, end like that so this is American English end so actually you don't have to, to emphasize the letter T the last letter in the verb, actually. But since we are using American English, it's going to be the way or the style or the methodology we are applying in our English instruction or medium instruction of our educational system in the Republic of the Philippines. Okay, going back to abhorrent. What do you mean by abhorrent? Okay, abhorrent means uh, oppose. Okay, oppose. Okay. Contrary, like that, okay? Contrary, strongly disagree, okay? Strongly disagree, okay? And then we have also hatred, something like this, meaning of abhorrent, okay? So meaning is opposing, in contrary, strongly disagree. You'll say, uh, use this in a sentence, I will, I will be abhorrent to his decision because for me it isn't a practical decision he delivered okay or he emphasized to the to the to the group something <laughs> or to your colleagues or to your team in a particular department for example if you're working already in a factory or a company or different industries you will say i am in abhorrent i don't like something because you know he is very strict meaning you are opposing in contrary, strongly disagree, and sometimes, so if the leveling is so really abhorrent that match, you need to say hatred. Okay? Meaning, you are hating the, the concept only, the, meaning the concept or the ideology or the notion or the idea or the insight or the philosophy or the view or the opinion or the statement. So there's a lot of these terminologies. So you can you, if you can summarize them all okay something like that so you don't like okay number four repugnant <laughs> repugnant okay so repugnant actually we can use this also to uh taste for example my gosh i don't like uh, i i am repugnant to the fruit meaning you are extremely distasteful meaning you don't like the taste Okay, this this tasteful. Okay, meaning D I S attaching to it meaning it is a, a opposite to being acquiring a good taste. This is this taste. D I S T A S T E adding F U L. Okay, so full distasteful. Okay, if you add full and less, that turn out to be a adverb already. Huh? It's not an adjective. If you add, for example, here, uh, careless, like that. Okay? What is? Watchful, like that. And then, inevitably, okay? something like that. So, adding ly, what is that? Adding ly is also an adverb, huh? Or full or less, like that. Okay? You get the point? Harmless, harmful, something like that. Okay? You get the point? Okay, so there's a little difference between an adverb and an adjective. You get the point. Okay, so repugnant meaning extremely. We'll see, extremely, there's addition of ly. So it's going to be adverb. Extremely distasteful. Okay, like that. And then you will see also uh, unacceptable. Oh my gosh, uh, that is repugnant to me. I don't lie. We will say it's unacceptable for you. So repugnant is also unacceptable. Okay, or you can say also uh, that's incompatible. 
another meaning of repugnant is incompatible. You know, it's not repugnant to this because if, we, if you insert the CD to the particular, the slot is very small, you know, the, the dimension will not be equal, something like that. So you will say incompatible, something like, you know, I don't, we don't usually go often or sometimes because you know, we are repugnant with each other. You, say, you are incompatible with each other based on inclination, uh, <coughs> sorry, habits, interests, uh, you know, talents, skills, experience, like that. A kind of thing that you usually do, you are not meeting with each other. For example, if you are, he loves to cook and he loves to sing. But he loves to cook, but he don't love to sing. Normally, you are repugnant with each other, right? Because you are incompatible. Something like that. Okay? You don't have the same interests. Something like that. Normally, your friendship will never grow. Because you are not having the same interest. You get the point? There's a conflict of interest between your personalities among you and the group. So usually, you will never go going to one flow for example if you love basketball and the other one love football okay so there are times you will separate because the other one don't like other one so that's incompatibility okay that is also repugnant with each other you get the point ganon okay so number five delinquent okay so it's just like juvenile delinquency okay we have a republic act of juvenile delinquency based on our philippine 1987 constitution okay meaning that is more on the violating the law in violation to the established law or republic act or house bills like or resolution promulgated promulgated by our uh, you know congressmen like that okay the usually the way the legislators okay remember we have three branches of government executive legislation and the judiciary okay so the one who will fabricate laws are the legislation or legislator something like that you get the point and it will be raised to the judiciary to, to ratify okay, or to cross-examine if it is acceptable and valid, uh, validation will be there before it will be accepted and it will become really uh, an order that it will now become a republic or something like that, okay? Like that, IRR, implementing rules and regulations after that one. Before it will become a law, there must be an IRR prior to that. Okay, so if you will not become a Republic Act, meaning to say it's just really a, a house bill resolution yet, not a act. So the finality will be the Republic Act. Okay, if you try to put that in a case, if there's a complainant that is a plaintiff, okay, you get the point in, uh, in a filing a case, and then the, the finality will be the convection or the GRM. If there's no GRN number, then this that will not be it subject for convection and there will be no punishment, something like that. Of course, we need to examine and evaluate that it could be a, a violating the civil okay, or criminal, civil law and the criminal law. You get the point? So you need to, to validate categorically if it, if, if it is falling on the civil law, which is not really that very deep in punishment okay so for example and then we have also the criminal law the criminal law usually the punishment is a uh, five to ten years in prison and usually reclosure perpetua you know what is reclosure perpetua i'm not a lawyer but i'm just reading researching reclosure perpetua is imprisoned eternally or panghabang buhay na kulong there's no Okay, there's no bail. B A I L. Okay, there's no pardon in it. Okay, like that. So most of the time, criminal cases, not civil cases. Ha? Huh? Okay, something like that. So the link, we are linking the ideas or notion because we are dealing with delinquency. 
So delinquency is more on the legality. When a person fails okay, to follow and comply the legalities or a contractual obligation. <laughs> like that. So it's also delinquent. Okay? Meaning illegal. Okay? You get the point? Illegal. Okay? And then extremely misbehavior against the law. Okay, so these are delinquent. So in a layman's term, you will say it's just like not fulfilling your normal tasks. If you try to try to equate or it's gonna be tantamount only to a simple term that is what we call lazy. Because that's literal, meaning to say it can be applied also in that sentence. For example, uh Jun Jun is very delinquent to wash his clothes. Meaning I, I'm not complying. To fulfill my duty in doing my household course equivalent also in a not following the legalities of the law meaning to say that is not literal only applicable only for the law you can also use that also the term delinquent to a normal situation for example your tasks in your job you will say i don't like this colleague because he is very delinquent mm. meaning lazy he will never perform his task well. He will always sleep and eating the food. So you can change the word lazy into delinquent now. Right? So it's, it's going to be more delight to use that compared to the lazy, which is more common. Right? You get the point? Uh, so delinquent. Uh, well, juvenile delinquency. Juvenile meaning to say that is a, an age bracket in the youth era. Youth. From... Uh, 13 years old to 19 years old. That is youth, age, range, right? So that's why we call juvenile. Okay, so juvenile delinquency law for the youth, exclusive for the youth, something like that. Okay, and I don't have to <laughs> emphasize the republic because I'm not a lawyer. Okay, I'm just telling the definition of the delinquency or delinquent. Okay, like that. Okay, so that's an example also. So uh, Jun Jun is very delinquent to perform his regular tasks as a safety engineer. Uh, that's also an example of delinquent. Okay, like that. You get the point? Uh, so chastity. Wow. Vow to become a preacher, something like that, or a pastor, or shall we say uh, the one who serves the church. Okay, one requirement is you have the vow of chastity. Okay, you have the vow of poverty and vow of chastity. What do you mean by chastity? Meaning to say chastity is a person who have, you know, morally clean in thoughts, in actions, and in words. Okay, meaning not dirty-minded, not negative always positive thinker or let us say an optimistic person not pessimistic right pessimistic is an opposite of optimistic meaning subject to negativities but if you are a positive thinker or you are a, a person that full of positivism in life that could be a you are an optimist or optimistic something like that okay then chastity meaning to say pure Thoughts, clean minds, words, and action. There's no such negative thinking, something like that. So that is chastity. The preacher, the priest, all kinds of preach or leaders, religious leaders, have the vow of chastity. Because they will be clean in front of the people to follow the religion, the doctrine of their religion. So how can they try to uphold and promote Okay, the statements or the biblical statements to be put into actions if they are not clean in mind, in thoughts, in words, and in actions. So they are not a good example. So it's, it's useless in the first place. So that's why they should meet the vow, meaning pledge. Okay, vow, V-O-W, pledge. Or meaning to say uh, a strong agreement. Okay, vow. Okay, uh, let's say vow of chastity. So meaning to say in the word, this is a no 
sexual intercourse. Okay? So at least you are clean sexually. This is the deeper terminology of chastity. Higher than the one I said a while ago that is morally clean in thoughts, in words, and in actions. That's too general to consider. That's also chastity in a general effect, in impact, not literal. Okay? But the deepest terminology that is really, really, uh, you know, swat sa banga, that is really, swat sa banga, that is really no sexual intercourse or no premarital sex before marriage. You got the point? So that is chastity. Means, means to say, chastity is very difficult to follow. Okay? This is only for the most righteous uh, people that uh, God have given them, chosen them to be the prophet, something like that, to teach the gospel and the religion, how to follow the statutes. You know statutes? Statutes is a law of God, the commandments of God, or the passage in the Bible, equivalent in Quran, something like that. And you have to comply that requirement. Being a preacher, you have a very, very strong vow of chastity. And that is chastity. Okay, like that. Okay, so, number seven, opulent. Wow. Nangakaloka naman opulent. What is really an opulent? Opulent is just the same as luxurious. Okay? Luxurious, extravagant, and wealthy. Okay? So this is opulent. So I will use that in a word. Okay? Like that, uh, for example, I will say uh, uh, David Gates. <laughs> David Gates is already a well, uh, an opulent person. Meaning wealthy, uh, uh, luxurious, and prosperous like that, okay? Or shall we say rich? So it's just the same meaning, right? Okay? Reiterated. Okay. I always reiterated in my report that you need to comply the waste management system in order for us to have a clean environment. So that we cannot produce pollution in our nature or in our planet Earth. Then I have to reiterate always this statement. Please perform waste reduction at the source. Segregate the waste properly according to the types of the waste and classify it very well before the collection or dumping that in a trash container or you know trash bins before uh, collecting that by means of any collecting of the waste, could it be a mechanical movement through truck or just only manual in waste disposal before you dispose the property into the designated waste disposal and dumping area. So meaning to say, this is reiterated meaning uh, stated multiple times in repeated manner. Okay, I will say. Re I reiterated already, sir, but you don't follow. What can I do? Mm. We need to say, you always keep on telling that to them, that certain procedure or system, but they don't listen to you. So that's the time you will use the term reiterated. The word re -her, here is a prefix. Just like, for example, uh, re regeneration. What else? There's a lot of, that starts with re. That's only a prefix prior to, because the root word here is iterate. Iterate meaning you have to, uh, you have to emphasize something like that. You have to to explain. You have to define. You have to uh, tell that it's gonna be like that. You should follow. You need to uh, um, elaborate something like that. So that is the term for iterate. This is not a. This is not a common term, okay? I would say reiterated meaning you repeated that term, uh, reports every time because nobody follow the procedure or system that has been created in your organization. Okay. Now we have number nine, labyrinth. Okay. So this is saying statements a multiple of times in repetitive manner. Okay, like that, or again and again and again. So use reiterated. Ah, okay. 
So we have labyrinth. Uh, the main reason why I don't marry at this point, and this is the example, because I have labyrinth in my life. <laughs> wow, grabe naman labyrinth. Okay, labyrinth is just like a complexity, a complexity and irregular passages of the road, something like that, that you don't know where's the exit, you, you don't know where's the entrance, just like you will be getting lost in the wilderness. Wow, wilderness, just like a forest. So just like a maze in Z that you don't know where to go. Something like that. That's an labyrinth. Okay? So that's deeper term also in that you don't know where to go. You cannot decide because you cannot do what you are thinking for. You, you cannot establish a very good decision because you are in a labyrinth of nowhere. <laughs> so that's labyrinth. Okay? Ang literal ano niya katong irregular, okay, complexity of the passages that you don't know where to go. That's a literal. Okay? But the general, you can apply that also in decision making. That's why I don't, I, I am not rich because I, I am not in a, I am in a labyrinth. I am in a labyrinth of too much, uh, you know, confusions in my mind. Mm. Labyrinth means to say, you don't know really what's going on, you cannot understand, unexplainable, something like that. Okay? So it's gonna be like that, not literal, but the most uh, you know, fit to that is the irregular, okay, irregular passage, complex passage, or difficult passage that uh, you don't know where to go. Just like a maze, M-A-Z-E. Okay, for example, if you go to a certain city and you are driving and you get lost, you don't know where to go, so you are now in a maze. You are now in a labyrinth of that certain location. That's the labyrinth meaning. Get the point? So, I am in a labyrinth of uh, being in love. <laughs> oh, because you do not know how to be in love. <laughs> Something like that. You get the point? So, there's so many things in your mind that you, there's no feeling and emotions to be loved or to be in love. So, that's why labyrinth. Naguguluhan. Something like that, okay? Okay, get the point. And the last will be 10. 10 and opulent and affluent. It's just a um, design. This is also wealthy, prosperous, rich, like that. Okay? Affluent. This is only a, a, a light term of being rich, of being wealthy, of being prosperous, of being opulent, and of being uh, stable financially or lucrative, sinecure. Okay, meaning to say you are already stable, even though you will not work a lot, you are already stable, lucrative. Okay, sinecure. You get the point? Mga anak siya, guys. You get the point? So these are the 10 terminologies in our vocabulary time. Any question? So far. Any question of this vocabulary time? This is only a guidance, guys, huh? If you love ready to, to create an article, to, to make a report, or whatever you love really journalism or you love really to join certain easy writing contest something like that and whatever types of competition or rhetorical contest declamation contest and it's also spelling contest you can also use this also you should also to take note the spelling like that and also what do you call this one extemporaneous speaking competition Slogan making competition, right? Uh, would it be also feature writing competition? And the sports writing competition and news writing competition. These are the areas of journalism and also poetry, short story, and novel. N O V E L. No novel. Okay? Right? How to write a novel, how to write a short story, how to write a, a plain story, how to write a poetry and how to write a poem. So these are all the coverage of journalism, including the editorial, the feature writing, editorial writing, sports writing, news writing, essay writing, oratorical speeches, public speeches, of okay, how to do hosting, emceeing, like that, declamation contest, like that, spelling contest, and extemporaneous speaking and also the photojournalism is already included in journalism photo taking pictures taking videos now it's already incorporated 
part of journalism. Okay, so that's we call as photojournalism and video journalism, which are the main tools to deliver uh, a quick and effective reporting in the news in television like that or in a worldwide uh, news center all over the world by the reporters and the journalists as you can see in the te TV something like that okay this is powerful tools that's part also of journalism taking video taking photos uh, asking questions like that, that like that so the so we basically the reporter and the writer have this knowledge already before they will be accepted to this kind of job normally they are graduate of bachelor of science in mass communication something like that mass call you get the point so but to become a broadcast journalist is a very special you know specialization of mass communication you get the point things like that to be an anchor man in a sports is also part of mass communication uh, in a radio you are an announcer of the radio you are also the voice over as you can see in the mall uh, that the girl will say take an exit by 11 o'clock we will be closed like that they keep on announcing also the promotion is only until july 12 2020 like that so those people are talking in the mall those are voiceovers that also mass communication graduates like that not only that limiting to the radio okay radio radio network television network like that you get the point and also not only that and also in the printing industries in the books okay printing press in creating the books uh, you know circulating that all over the world that's also part of journalism manufacturing creation conceptualizing and the production and publishing of newspapers magazines like that or books are part also of journalism so the journalism is very broad actually okay so that's why they are very very useful for the uh communication that's why if they will spread lies and disinformation so they, de they defeat their purpose as a real journalist they are not doing the right thing that a journalist should not be biased to the public something like that okay so supposedly this is already in the code of ethics for being a journalist but because sometimes also because of uh, the power of you know money attraction so that's why because there's no other way because that's the only way they can get income no other so they are be, they are tempted to uh grab the you know the immoral acts <laughs> immoral acts okay the extortion and everything like that and they will be paid by a certain entity or big businessmen uh belong to the oligarchies something like that right you remember the, the study between define monopoly versus oligo oligopoly so this oligopoly type of business the one who are managing are the oligarchies okay only meaning multiple mono meaning one so oligopoly the oligarchs when we mean of oligo oligo that means multiple owners or corporations or incorporation but the mono is a standalone only one owner that is monopoly for example the business of uh you know monosodium powder what do you call this one the vitsin ajinomoto there's no competition so they, they monopolized the kind of product because there's no competition. That is monopoly, something like that. And then example for ice cream, there's a lot of products of ice cream that really manufacture that kind of product. They are oligopoly. So the one who are trying to produce that are the oligarchies, something like that. Okay, mono and oli. Okay, prefix parensha, attach mo, attach prior to the root word mono and oli okay but the term is poly oligopoly and monopoly you get the point that is in the uh civica and cultura araling panipunan and social studies and history subject i don't know really guess because we keep on changing the the title of that subject sometimes current events history 
social studies, civica, and cultura, araling panlipunan. Sometimes we are confused, what is really the, the right term for this? Because our educational system is uh, keep on changing the descriptive title of this social studies, uh, history, current events, civica, at cultura, and araling panlipunan. Maglibog na lang ka. Okay, but, but it means all history. Okay? Studying the etymology. Well, etymology meaning studying of the previous history of country to country, ethnicity, race, religion, colors, like that, cultures, traditions, religions, like that. That is etymology. A E T Y M O L O G Y. Okay? You get the point? So it's part of history. Okay? Study. You get the point? Anak siya, guys. Okay, layo na ko because I here. Okay? So, this will be our vocabulary time, 10 terminologies. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? I explained too fast. If you cannot understand my, you know, my enunciation and my delivery of words, because that's my weakness, I talk too fast. Okay? So, you have to say, slow down, sir. I cannot understand. Something like that. Because anyway, my, you know, my pronunciation is very clear, right? But the only weakness of mine is talking very fast to the extent that my tongue will be twirled. Something like that. And then, you know, you get the point because I'm not American, right? Okay, I'm a Filipino. Sometimes my tongue will be twirled and I will pose for a while. <laughs> but I will never say, mm, uh, uh, like that. It's not my culture to, to be like that. Okay, so I can straight answer in flowing English, especially in interviews. I will never pause. Sometimes the interviewers will say, slow, slow down a bit, pardon, <laughs> something like that. After uh, asking one question, so straight to the bed, like that, no pause at all. Okay? I don't want, uh, 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 I don't want like that because you know, that is an effective communicator if you do a lot of pause. Okay? Stoppage during your delivery. Okay? Get the point? So if you do that always in your delivery and explanation, you are not spontaneous, meaning non-spontaneous, ineffective communicator. Huh? Ineffective is the reverse <laughs> of effective. Just like add in only I N. Okay? For example, capacity. Uh, capacity. So incapacity. Incapacitated. Wow. <laughs> meaning to say you don't have the capacity to perform that job. Okay. For example, uh, Jun Jun is inca incapacitated to do the task of being an environmental engineer. Meaning to say, he has no the ability, he don't have the ability, uh, the capacity, the skill, and the knowledge to perform the tasks of being an environmental engineer. That is incapacitated. That's common, right? Okay. Common or shall we say not used all the time, but it's also incapacitated. Wow. So, for example, if you are not responsible, uh, the father is incapacitated to educate their children because the father is very delinquent, <laughs> lazy. Here, I discuss. Right? Ganon. Okay. So, guys, look at my milk here. Fresh milk, Almarai. Wow. I love Almarai. Okay, this is uh, low-fat milk. I don't usually drink low-fat milk. I will try only twice or one time in a month, something like that. So, I will just also drink if I will crave something like that. But I will never use full-fat, really. Only low-fat. Okay? Get the point. And also, if I crave also about soft drinks, I need to drink also. I don't know, I guess this... You know, Diet Pepsi sometimes 2150. It's labeled in the packaging of the can of a Pepsi. I'm not promoting products, guys. Disclaimer. I'm not promoting products. I'm just explaining in my vlog. Because I'm just uh I'm just usually buying this kind of products. That's why. Okay? So I'm not promoting. I'm not a product endorser. Okay. This is a diet Pepsi, and for me, this is a uh, tasteful. <laughs> okay, for me, and then you know, because I used to this, it's it's basing on our immune system, right? Now, as you can see here, this is 
there's a labeling 2.50 but i wonder why sometimes 2.75 how can this manufacturers do this in during the the packaging of the can they will vary because sometimes 2.75 here 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 sometimes 2.50 i cannot understand sometimes what's really the accurate price of this 2.50 or 2.75 Okay, sometimes when you buy into the gasoline station, and if you look at the packaging of the can of this Diet Pepsi, it's gonna be 2.75 here reflected in the upper portion of the can. And then now 2.50 also when you when I buy when I bought in the Bacala or in other places also, there's no consistency in the price of this Diet Pepsi. I don't understand also with the soft drinks because I don't normally drink, I know the true soft drinks. I always use the diet, 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 or the low sugar soft drinks okay or sugar less soft drinks okay but since diet Pepsi is my in, in my in system now so that's why i observe the pricing there's no consistency in the pricing i cannot understand why okay because it matters also a lot for example if i will buy six pieces seven pieces oh my gosh i'm not you know nakakaloka. so i'm not really that uh, adamant <laughs> i'm not really that adamant in seeing the prices i'm not really aware that's adamant right okay you get the point so 2.50 shop then for example if you buy 10 pieces 2.50 times 10 so you can save right and sometimes you don't know because other stores are selling this 2.75 i cannot understand but true it is reflected in the can here see this a lovely i like this because the sugar use is aspartame Okay, not the sh glucose sugar, which is not good, which is not good for the health. The, for example, the glucose sugars, the C six H twelve O six family, the refined sugar. Okay, the manufactured sugar, the white color is the worst sugar of them all, compared to salt, uh, lactose, galactose, maltose, ribulose. Okay, like this. Aspart aspartame is also a type of a sugar that is having a less level of uh, sugar aspartame okay this one just research this is also in the in the net what is really the function of aspartame but i found out also this can cause also obesity if you try to drink all the time but if you try to compare this, this to the regular soft drink this is less in sugar yeah, i have no choice <laughs> okay because i have to, to satisfy also my craving sometimes right okay i'm still human being you get the point i cannot eliminate all about sweets i can still eat but in a minimal amount or the frequency is not regular so that, that don't matter i must because i already maintain my weight i am in my weight stabilization wow stabilization okay thank you so much for watching this vocabulary time english time and I hope you will apply also this terminology in your writing of articles or writing of reports or even when you talk or when you discuss in your reporting or when you sometimes uh, try to talk in the public speeches in a crowd and you'll be able to do also to uh, initiate uh, a speech, a forum, a symposium, a seminar, a conference and you will be the one to lead okay then you you also use this term like that blah 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 so and so not only really that a requirement just like uh using this also to calibrate as a professional something like that okay because that will gauge you one over the other if you are really having that expertise in the vocabulary something like that so it matters a lot also the impression or something like that okay your your level something like that Okay, you get the point. You get the point because you are really ah, he's really a good speaker, something like that. I don't found the quality. For example, on yeah, I don't found the quality of Junjun to other engineers. He is totally different from others, something. So it will create a positive impression. The way how you deliver your uh, discussion, explanation like that, and everything, showing you uh, vlogging also streaming. So it, especially if your job really is training like that, okay? So I know that because I've been also a safety trainer before, okay? And uh, ADNOC, Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, we are the main contractor. So my job there is HSE trainer, okay? HSE trainer, engineer, 
I don't know why why they added engineering in that because it is already understood. If you are a trainer, you usually pick up an engineer, something like that. But it looks like redundancies, but I don't have the right to complain because that is the designation, right? By the HR. HSE trainer, engineer, something like, oh my gosh. Get the point? Because once you add already ER, that represents already the, the dober or the, the player or the actor, meaning to say that the, the person itself. For example, uh, if you do dancing, dancer, if you do singer, singer, like that. So if you play, player, you just add letter E and R in the last two letters in the word. That's the point. So if you try to, to do the vlog, you are a vlogger. You will add also ER in the last two letters of the term vlogger. Something like that. If you try to report, you will be called also a reporter. You should also add ER in the last two letters of the word reporter. Announcer. So if you if you that if you have that job being announcer, then you put also ER because your your job is to announce. Meaning to say this is for the people that who do that certain task. You will put ER, something like that. Oh, if you do the research, you are also a researcher. Like that. Add ER from the root word research. Something like that. Then if you are a, a person who do the training, so you are a trainer. So actually it will end up there. Safety trainer. No need to add an engineer because that's already redundant to uh, to trainer. You we already put ER in the trainer. There's no way to add another noun after the trainer because the trainer is already a noun that signifies that you are a trainer. No, no need to put engineer term. That could be a redundant in English. Something like redundant duplication of declaration of terms. But anyhow, that's not a big deal, right? So it's happened already. <laughs> Who am I to, yeah, to, to educate? <laughs> you got the point? So that's not really that, uh, important also. Okay, because you know in Middle East grammar is not very important. Okay, to, to tell you frankly, grammar, spelling, and the way you construct English, as long as you can talk well and deliver well, that would be okay. And then the best thing is to use simple English and basic English only, so that they will be under, they will understand what they're talking. And then if they, and if they cannot understand, you need an interpreter and a translator. Okay, something like that. If you really love to expound well your talent and communication, delivery, teaching, the Middle East is not the place for you. Okay? You get the point? Because of the issues. You get the point? So you could go to US, America, Europe, in which you can expound, or you can widen and enhance your ability in your English language vocabulary and grammar thing. Right? I'm just talking the reality, okay? In fact, sorry guys, that's reality kasi. You get the point? So thank you so much for watching for this vocabulary time. And I hope you like it. I do this also because I miss the reporting. I miss writing articles when I was in college. Like that, blah, 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 so and so. Okay, I've been also editing some, you know, editing some topics in the books before. It also worked in that also, for example, producing uh, producing canned goods and then before releasing to the market, there's uh, features and manuals and you have to edit that. That's my job before. Uh, that uh, information analyst, chemical information analyst. So we are not analyzing the chemicals itself, but we are analyzing the information reflected in a book. Okay, in the, the magazine, whatever, we need to review, we need to, to proofread and summarize, and we need to eliminate the redundancies, the duplications, the useless of the terminologies, so that it can be summarized into uh, fewer brevity. You know brevity? B-R-E-V-I-T. Brevity is the maximum number of words for a certain article, because there are rules for that. For example, if it is editorial, the brevity should not exceed 10,000 words. If you are dealing with this, the maximum word is only uh, 5,000 words. There's really a technical information for that. And you should, you should follow that every time. Because if that is more than that, the brevity, it 
doesn't fall already to editorial. It doesn't fall now to the essay because you are more than to the brevity and that is the requirement. How to write, for example, how to write a poem. What, what is the maximum numbers of words to be done? At least it is like this, 1,000 words. Like I forgot because that was too long time ago. Okay, but I'm just telling you that it's gonna be like that to become a journalist, authors of the books and the writers. Okay, there's a rule when to to author a book or when to conceptualize and to create, uh, you know, theories and principles in the books, then you have to do such thing. Requirements is at least minimum of two proofreading. Proofreading meaning review of all the spelling. Uh, spelling, grammar, the agreement of the, the noun and verb agreement, the, the phrasing of the paragraph. Okay, you have to check that out. And then the maximum brevity. Uh, before it will be finalized, you take two proofread. And then after that, you as a writer, huh? you as a writer, you will do that. And after that, you will submit that to the editor. Then the editor also will do also a lot of proofread before releasing that to the market, before printing that, okay, as a book, as a magazine, as a newspaper. So that's going to be the process. Meaning to say, the, the editor-in-chief will really know the content of his of her writers. Okay, for example, uh, just, like, just like now, Rappler, an online news this particular journalism. It's impossible. Riza doesn't know the content of the uh, case because she will be the one to review with the writer's uh, output. Okay? As an editor-in-chief. Something like that. Because there will be an editor-in-chief in a certain uh, company like that. In a printing press company, like that, blah, blah, blah. In a newspaper agency company, in an online agency company, in a TV network company. All have editor-in-chief. The editor-in-chief will be the, the, the last to, to check everything. Again, what to check? The grammar, the spelling, okay? The, the phrasing, the noun and verb agreement. Adverb, adjective, uh, eliminating the redundancies and the jargons, something like that. So that's our the, the your proofreading, something that and be sure that your title will not exceed eight letters. Oh, no, eight words. There's also a requirement for a title. The title will not be more than eight words. If you have, if you try to have the caption. Captioning is technically limited only to eight words because if, if, if it will go beyond eight words, that is not a good title of your article. You doesn't fall already technically how to write an article because the rule says in journalism, meaning maximum of eight words on the caption and your title of your any articles you'll be able to produce in your magazines, newspapers, books, online news or columns section in uh, social media. But if you are not aware of technicalities because you don't have training in journalism, you don't have an experience, of course, you don't have a So it's in your own gusto, because you don't But if you know really the technicalities, there's a rule to follow in journalism. And that, that's basically the, the editor-in-chief knows that. Okay, you got the point? Ganun siya. Okay, that's why I encourage you to join journalism because it's very, very, not only to those students that love English, it's really neat because for me really, guys, uh, if you are really good in English and you are also having a good comprehension because usually, guys, all the, the manuals, SOPs, like that procedures, examinations globally are expressed and declared in English language. Because English language is an international and universal language. There's an advantage really to people who are good in English and at the same time good in math and good in science. Like that. Okay? So it's gonna be like that. Just like me, I'm not good in math. But why I, am be I became a licensed chemical engineer? Because I can interpret. Because English, the questions are written in English. And I can distinguish where to end the sentence, where's the comma, where's to put the period. Because you can understand there. 
the you know, the conditions there in your question. For example, if you find the velocity of the outlet of the pipeline, and, and there's comma, so that condition is referring only to the previous uh, physical properties. It's not related to the other one. And if you cannot understand that one, because you don't know what is punctuation mark, you know, comma, period, like that, it matters a lot also in interpreting a paragraph or a question, where to stop. Because your assumptions will only stop there, if there's a period, you will never continue. And also the words also likewise, like, and then if you don't understand also that kind of a preposition, and that's very also relevant in, in analyzing a, a question and a problem solving. So likewise, the velocity also, like, blah, blah. so meaning you will be, even though the figure will not be put again, since you are using the word likewise, then it's understood that the, you know, that the magnitude is just also the same thing in your other condition in the question. Then if you don't know that, so we need to say, you will, not, you will fail to solve it properly. That's why I, I said, if you are good in English, also a good an advantage in passing examination. Because you can comprehend very well how the sentence and the question being phrased to solve what is being asked. Could it be a theory or a problem solving? Okay, because me also, I'm not good in math. Okay, really, I'm an engineer, but I'm not really good at in math. I passed. English and science are already enough. Math average is okay. Okay, but it doesn't need to be brilliant and intelligent math to become an engineer. As long as you are good in science and in English. Why? Because also in finding a job also, the employers also are very clever to detect if you can deliver reasonably the answers well. They are checking the comprehension. They are not checking the grammar. They are checking the reasoning, the, 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 val the validity and the point of what you are talking. And in fact, they are not also checking how spontaneous you are talking. Because there are also people very spontaneous but the it has no substance in their answers. They're only a good communicator, but the point in their statements when they answer the questions of the employer's interview have no substance or less substance also. And they're also detecting that one. They know that in the first place. You get the point? So it's not also saying if you, if, if you are good in English, you are, they will accept you immediately. They will also uh, filter out or cross-examine or scrutinize the main point of your answers. Meaning, they are checking your uh, comprehension, reasoning ability based in your experience like that. How can you be an asset of the company if they will be accepting you? Would it improve the organization if, if we will hire you? Something like that. Would you become productive? when we hire you so that you will be also setting yourself as an example to other employees to become also productive something like that to meet the common objective of that particular organization so in that way the employees and the workers will be the asset of the organization so that they can maintain the stability and the sustainability of the business because all companies and industries and companies all over the world are business something like, and the business will never grow if there are no people the key players to establish <laughs> the success of the business through profit. Something like that. The point. Okay, any questions so far? No, I need to drink coffee to lower my blood pressure. Though I have a very good blood pressure, 120 over 80, and then lower my cholesterol level, and also my fatty substances. <laughs> Charot. Charot lang. Bye bye, God bless everybody. Thank you so much for watching this vlogging and live streaming. I hope you like it. See you tomorrow for another topic. So tomorrow I'm gonna be having related to safety. Okay? So I think I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be having the different categorization of the different types of you know uh, safety indicators when to achieve a good KPI, K performance indicators of having a good safety performance in different industries and companies all over the world. So what is really the KPI in OSH? 
that is generic to all companies and industries all over the world. I need to discuss that also. So we're gonna be touching OSH vlog tomorrow. Expect that to happen. <laughs> okay, but I'm not really sure if I am in good condition I'll be able to do that because sometimes I'm also very lazy. Okay? I am very delinquent sometimes. Just like this, I don't have the plan to vlog, but I plan, but I do the vlog. Okay, something like that. So, meaning to say, you know, I am really blocked on. Blocked on. Okay, bye bye, God bless everybody. If you're not subscribing to my YT channel, you can subscribe to my YT channel if you want. And then you can get the notification bell for some new stuff. I am a senior general voice. Bye bye, God bless everybody. Bye bye. Wah. Diba? Nakakaloka.